I guess that settles it. With the recent release of the Fallout TV show uh, a few days ago, the biggest discourse that I've seen around the show would be the minor choice to utterly annihilate the NCR's capital city, Shady Sands, and depict them in a far more degenerated and frankly hopeless position than we've become accustomed to. It obviously leaves one to wonder, well, is the NCR dead? The short answer, no. The long answer, I get more ad revenue, or I mean let's start with what we can gain from the TV show itself. First, we see that Shady Sands has been completely destroyed, leaving a massive crater in its wake. We soon see the effect of this on its former citizens, with some finding refuge in Vault 4 where they have turned to religious worship, praying for the return of Shady Sands and continuing to hold on to their history as NCR citizens, teaching the younger generation about its history, its founding, development, the supposed fall of Shady Sands, and finally its destruction. While other seeming survivors of Shady Sands have settled at an old observatory, while maintaining their identity as part of the NCR, including networks of still loyal NCR citizens. By the end of the series, the NCR at the observatory appear to have been wiped out, while power has been supplied to the entire surrounding remains of the city, unless the Brotherhood turns it off, as they now control the observatory. The first problem I have is, I don't even think that is Shady Sands. Fallout 1 clearly shows Shady Sands located far away from Los Angeles, and in the end slide, there is no depiction of any city, or ruins around the town. What is depicted is nothing but a vast desert, and the show creators clearly looked at reference images, as they have the obelisk and the well featured in the original game. There's also the fact that one of the NCR states by Fallout 2 is named Shady. Anyone would reasonably assume that the city of Shady Sands is indeed within this state, while another one of the NCR states is named Los Angeles, presumably including the LA Boneyard. So how does Shady Sands end up in the Boneyard then? Well, the only logical answer would be to say that it doesn't. Because really the only alternative would mean that the show creators have no regard for previously established lore or consistency. So the explanation of how Shady Sands ended up in the worst place on Earth is really as simple as, well, I'll let Patrick explain. We should take Bikini Bottom and push it somewhere else! Very good, thank you Patrick. Not a great explanation, but it's really the only explanation. Of course, I'm not implying Shady Sands was dragged across the California wastes, at least not in its entirety. As previously mentioned, we see Shady Sands in Fallout 1 far away from the LA Boneyard, but by Fallout 2, things have changed. Despite the new California Republic consisting of territory all across Southern California, the capital itself, what was formerly known as Shady Sands, is now also known as NCR. By the time of New Vegas, this doesn't seem to have changed, as one of the questions asked by NCR missionaries during the mission GI Blues is as follows. What was the original name of the capital of the NCR? The answer is of course Shady Sands. Due to the nature of the capital and the Republic as a whole having the same name, it's difficult to distinguish between the two, which may be purposeful. You would assume that when the characters in New Vegas refer to NCR, as opposed to THE NCR, it would mean the city. But as far as I can tell, this rule isn't followed. We also see in the Fallout TV show that the settlement known as Shady Sands is the first NCR capital. Again, I'm grasping at straws here, not really any other option. It seems that this settlement may be some sort of spiritual continuation of Shady Sands. To explain it as well as I can, Shady Sands was established in 2142, far out in the California desert. At some point during or after 2189, the settlement that was Shady Sands would become NCR, while the name of Shady Sands and its historical monuments would be relocated to a settlement within the LA Boneyard. It's a plausible explanation at least. It also explains why the population would be so low considering the NCR has a population of 700,000 by Fallout 2. Then the question becomes, what is the fall of Shady Sands? I would best explain this as, Shady Sands, the settlement within the Boneyard, being a small historically focused city. So the city was much of a monument to the history of the NCR and also one of the smaller NCR settlements. 
the fall of Shady Sands could be interpreted as societal fall, as 2277 was the year when the first Battle of Hoover Dam took place, and the NCR began pouring all its resources into the Mojave Campaign, which would then have the effect of crippling any industry that wasn't seen as necessary for the war effort, and pulling any and all able-bodied citizens into military service. But that's the best explanation I have. Is it weird they treat it as a perfect continuation of Shady Sands even though it's in a completely different location? Yes. But is it a better option than it somehow being that spot all along? Also yes. Now that we've got that little tidbit out of the way, how does the rest of the NCR look? Pretty damn good I reckon. I mean, it's tragic and all. We deeply miss Shady Sands, yada yada yada. But come on. It was just some tiny museum town, who the hell cares? It probably wasn't even the largest settlement in the Boneyard, assuming the city of Aditum hasn't fallen, or isn't what Shady Sands formerly was. But let's take a step back. We don't know what the outcome of New Vegas was, and that could greatly impact the state of the NCR. So for the moment, let's just ignore New Vegas. The destruction of Shady Sands shouldn't have a massive impact on the stability of the NCR as a whole, unless there was something invaluable that the city supplied, and as of yet nothing has been shown. The population loss, while still a blow to the NCR, is certainly not crippling. Shady Sands had 34,000 people, while in Fallout 2 the population of the entire NCR, or even possibly just the capital, is 700,000. Even if we write that off as propaganda, the number should have grown significantly more in the 40 years between 2 and New Vegas. The NCR is also comprised of settlements all over California. The entirety of the Los Angeles Boneyard, that we know at one point had other NCR towns, is just one of the five of the NCR's states. Almost all of the populated towns we visit in Fallout 1 and 2 become part of the New California Republic. Shady Sands is only a tiny part of a greater whole, and as I've outlined, the NCR's government likely is still in the same place since Fallout 1. For all we know, Kimball could still be president. But of course, that again brings up New Vegas. We can decide whether to utterly annihilate the NCR's army, help them plant their flag over the entire Mojave, or strong arm them into making a deal with Mr. House. If we were to look at the ideal scenario for the NCR, they take Hoover Dam, Vegas, and the entire Mojave. This fuels the expansion of a republic with a population well over a million, where the loss of a city like Shady Sands is felt, but does nothing to stop the NCR's rapid expansion. If we look at the worst case scenario, the NCR's Mojave campaign completely falls apart after they fail to hold Hoover Dam, rippling back through California, causing the Republic to fall apart from the loss of electricity, the onslaught by the Brotherhood, and the disillusionment in the NCR's ideals, leaving many of the settlements to fall and the rest to become isolated city-states, few of which remain loyal to the NCR. But what I think is the most realistic outcome, the NCR could never win the Mojave campaign without immense help. Regardless of the effectiveness of the Legion as a fighting force, the NCR is simply spread too thin to hold an area that in the best of places is merely indifferent to them, let alone the numerous gangs, mutant hordes, and even just spiteful wastelanders. Still, it matters a lot less than you would think. Because as much as the NCR has devoted to the Mojave campaign, essentially hinging its continuation as the same sort of republic on that victory, thanks to Todd, we know they won't collapse at its failure. Because there isn't enough time. The match that would burn down the NCR's corrupt, bankrupted government after losing a long and drawn out war with a technologically inferior force of guerrilla fighters, that match has already been snuffed out by an attack on their own soil. An entire city, even if a small one, wiped off the map in an instant. The NCR will not fall into disillusion, this act will only inspire unity. Fervent, jingoistic unity. The NCR will close ranks, close borders. Fresh off their conflict with the Legion and now this, they will become isolationist and grow a brutal contempt for wastelanders. This is why they weren't anywhere to be seen in the Fallout TV show. Not because they aren't there, but because they've locked themselves down in their own territory. They will struggle through the loss of Hoover Dam's power, but the NCR will stay intact. They will survive. The NCR does not have armories full of power armor suits, nor do they have pre-war bunkers scattered all around the country, yet they are still the largest organization in post-war America. 
This is because at their core they are settlers. While many that left Vault 15 would become nothing more than raiders, one group would create the original town of Shady Sands, this group being the future New California Republic. The NCR was never some rogue military unit or the executive branch of the government. They're simply people that chose to rebuild the world. In the Fallout show, we see the NCR group that is presumably made up of survivors from the destruction of the new Shady Sands. They occupy an old observatory, and in 15-ish years, they've built a settlement better than the vast majority of the country could manage in 200 years. And that is why the NCR will always survive, because they can rebuild like no other. But of course, that's just my opinion. No matter how much I claim it to be based on logic, it won't stop the show creators from deciding the destruction of this small city would completely collapse the entire NCR. You took four minutes of my life and I want them back. Oh, I'd only waste them anyway.